Ethiopia Space Science and Technology Institute, Syria, and Ukraine, yeah, Aerospace Engineering Research and uh, Development Directorate. It is a guy, John, your open virtual uh, lectures to let the young class uh, later. Sana, a program, uh, uh, East African Region, uh, Regional Office uh, for Astronomy for Development, Garba Metaba, where it is a guy, General. Yazarin class, Ato Barakat Sitota, Kat Alian, the Aerospace Structures, Aeroelasticity. And aircraft design light lecture set on us, Lazi Kizion, La Ato Barakat set Allah, Rasen, like a letter Sapafi to Castro Wikimina, like a Talim Chalano. Ato Barakat, someone of it. Oh, is someone with it? Thank you, Betty. You're welcome. Oh, is someone? How is someone? Okay, but I can still talk about it. I'm currently in Minoro, but I'm in Hager Milan Catamano. I'm a general degree in aeronautical engineering, the Turk Hager Neta Markut, the research stray, variable wing UAV design light that fun project work at Rena Gravana, the Sura structural design and manufacturing part to light Neusar route. You are a degree in Dagmo by University of Bologna, Master of Science in Aerospace Engineering, the MSC department. Uh, again, uh, mainly focused on aeroelasticity now. Uh, later on, uh, I have a master's degree in Energy Engineering like uh, Polytechnic of Turin, Zam Sijello. I own the energy sector while land companies in Milan, like the research and development department to stay as a roganyal. Another like a subculture in a personal research interest to your own aerospace, aircraft design, and aerospace structures. No, the Zari lecture mainly focus mother go by aerospace and aerospace design. I know because the next the mural lecture lies at the aircraft. Design general scheme and general process. We need to do that. But so I discuss another guy on the yes side. No, for basic introduction, we must learn what are the yes or no skills. No, we are not much learn. Thank you. Okay. Screen it, Taya Chuan. Oh, Taya. All right. My name is Lamala. I'm in Jandit. They discuss in the other girl. He's so much in Jonathan's for Maradon. I'm Catalan Maradon. Catapara, the same thing. I'm going to go to the how many of us have heard the term elasticity? Many elections used to now call them with them. Anyone who knows? No, okay. Now, Zoom with Achun and Mark Omer Milano Miso. Mainly, uh, when we talk about aerospace, uh, We've heard the term aerodynamics. So aerodynamics is in some island, aerospace symbol in some island, then aeroelasticity symbol is some. So let's see uh, what I'm going to do today is uh, uh, this is my, uh, I, my outline. So I'm going to introduce what is to give a general idea of what is uh, aeroelasticity. And why is it important? And why are we doing uh, aeroelasticity? And what are the types of aer uh, aeroelasticity? Uh, what are the real life examples, applications, what happened in real life related to aeroelasticity? And uh, how can we avoid this kind of phenomena? And how can we work again to avoid this phenomena? What can be, what are the measures that we have to take to avoid this phenomena? The uh, Minozureas, uh, elastic design modeling and analysis uh, present other Finally, uh, my uh, 
a brief presentation of my uh, thesis work. I kind of actually advanced the study of Saranatin. Now we are also still focusing on the research. Briefly present that the actual long So, if you see this figure, I don't know if it is blurred a little bit, but if you can see this figure, uh, source two main circular tree type actual aerodynamics, inertial force, and elasticity in minute force. Uh, the elasticity part can be considered as structural forces. Okay, there are three main forces act, acting on, on a body. These are the aerodynamic force, the inertial force, and the structural force, which is the elastic force. So we have these three main bodies in any aerodynamic, uh, any object which is uh, subject to loads. So when we talk about aeroelasticity, we are talking about how do these loads interact with each other? So for example, uh, if we talk about inertial force, like uh, the object itself is the state and it's aerodynamics, we are talking about flight dynamics. If we are talking about only elasticity and the inertial force, we are talking about structural dynamics. Uh, people who do structural dynamics and flight dynamics know these things. So, but when we talk about aerodynamics and structural forces interacting with each other, we are talking about uh, and static aeroelasticity. So static aeroelasticity means the interaction of aerodynamic forces with the elastic forces, which makes a static aeroelasticity. And the most complex one is the dynamic aeroelasticity because it's the interaction of all these forces together, the aerodynamics, aeroelasticity, uh, elasticity, and the inertial force. So, and as if also, and object like act me other group that is a integrated hono bagara act me other group that is a and if I throw the and if I throw the phenomenon actually in static elasticity dynamic elasticity in like chow and the field why is it important why do we study them you know they are very dangerous phenomenon if we don't study them and uh, try to avoid them uh, we will see them with examples and then. Uh, Will explain in detail what does it mean static elasticity and what is the dynamic elasticity. To, to move ahead and see uh, what is static elasticity, there are two main for two main uh, examples of static elasticity. These are divergence and uh, control reversal. So here it says divergence occurs when the moment due to aerodynamic force overcomes the restoring moments due to the structural stiffness. So to make it easy, let me start in the example. On a wing, on the amoeber on a wing, there is a force acting, aerodynamic load acting on the air. So when these loads act, there is a damping moment, which is the material itself, the structural stiffness itself, which damps it. So the aerodynamic loads and the structural loads, they balance each other. If this balance occurs, we are good. But if this balance doesn't occur, but these aerodynamic forces, if the structural forces, stiffness of the material cannot withstand uh, the aerodynamic loads, we know the wing is going to break or something is going to happen. But what makes the divergence an interesting phenomenon is, uh, uh, as you know, if you know about uh, um, how is lift generated on, on, a, on an airfoil or on a wing? Lift, you know, is, a di is the dynamic, dynamic pressure, uh, the lift coefficient, and the product of the dynamic coefficient, the lift coefficient, and the area of uh, the surface. So um, I hope most of you are aerospace engineers, so you remember, you know about what is lift. You know? Every Does everybody know about lift? Anyone who doesn't yeah. know about lift, I can maybe do give a, a, a quick review. So practically, if we are talking about a steady flight, for example, a, a very steady flight, we have four main forces acting, the lift, the drag, uh, the weight, and the thrust. So uh, this lift coefficient, CL, which is called uh, the, the force which helps us rise up, is the lift coefficient is directly proportional to, well, there is a plot to, to the angle of attack. If we have an angle of attack of certain degree, 
depending on the type of airfoil we have, some of them will, will after some uh, degree of angle of attack, they will stall, but to a certain degree, they will generate the maximum dip they can. So what happens with divergence is, uh, as you, and as, the, as I said, as the angle of attack increases, your lift is going to increase. So, which means your load is going to increase. So what, what is divergence? Divergence occurs at a point called uh, divergence speed. Uh, divergence speed is a speed at which this phenomenon happens. So which is, uh, when you reach to some, that speed, when you are traveling at that speed, hopefully uh, it will be after the, your normal operating speed, because if your operating speed and divergence speed are the same, then you can't operate, I mean, it's a failure. So when you reach to that level, that speed, uh, there is a positive feedback because your lifts will increase higher and your structural forces cannot dump the aerodynamic loads. This in turn creates another increase in angle of attack, which creates an increase in the lift load, which, which makes the structural loads hard, harder to, the structural stiffness harder to dump the aerodynamic loads, creating a positive feedback loop. So increasing the angle of attack leads to increasing, increasing uh, lift. Increase in lift causes increase in angle of attack, vice versa. It continues like this. Then finally, we reach into a level uh, that we can't control. And uh, usually what happens is the aircraft stalls or uh, the wing, uh, or mainly is stalling and then a crash happens, unfortunately. So this is one of the dangerous phenomena of static elasticity that we have to be careful. Uh, because it's it's mainly governing about the lift distribution and uh, the, the, the surfaces. Control reversal is another very interesting thing for the pilots because mainly, uh, if you know there are control surfaces on the wings, like the ailerons, the flaps, uh, and, the, and the tail, like the elevators, uh, the rudders, and all. So what happens when we reach to this divergence speed and we enter into the control reversal stages, for example, to turn right if we had to move the control to the right, it will turn to the left. Like it will shift everything because once you enter in that zone, if you, are, if you press right, for example, let's say as a pilot, if you want to turn right and, or you go to the right and you make a right movement, then the plane will go to the left because you have entered into, into this control reversal zone and your, uh, your device, your, your, your control system is just giving a wrong signal, an inverse signal. So, we have to be careful about divergence and control reversal. Control reversal, actually, it's, if, a, if the pilot is well experienced and all, uh, he can understand and try to balance, uh, try to mitigate the problem. But divergence is, uh, is extremely, extremely difficult. So what I, what I was talking about was uh, this beautiful uh, sketch of our, uh, an airfoil, which is always, we, we, know, we know it from uh, from uh, this graph. If you see in this graph, this is what I, what I was talking about, the elastic axis and uh, the, the lift center, which, is, which, is, which creates the positive feedback, the increase in angle of attack, alpha, causes increase in lift and all. So this is a very important thing to, to understand. And when the structure cannot damp this uh, load, this uh, aerodynamic load, we enter into a dangerous, a dangerous zone. Another most, actually very most complicated phenomenon compared to even the static elasticity is the dynamic, uh, the dynamic elasticity. This is called, uh, one of the most, the most common one uh, phenomena is called flutter. Uh, flutter is unstable self-excitation vibration in which the structure extracts energy from the airstream and often results in catastrophic structural failure. So if some of you are mechanical engineers or uh, know how structural background, uh, there are different modes of uh, vibration. You know, mode one, which is a bending, mode two uh, is a torsion, and uh, mode three bending, mode four torsion, and uh, coupling of all these uh, bending and torsion forces. So there are these phenomena which are uh, highly dangerous while uh, during the vibration case. But what flutter happens is it's, it's usually the joint uh, of both the phenomenon and bend, bending, uh, the both mode one, mode two, uh, phenomenon of bending and torsion together. So what happens is uh, the aircraft starts, once it goes into this flutter speed, which is also another, another speed in which it happens, 
where the, the aircraft starts to take the energy from the airstream and apply it to the body. And then, for example, there is a first harmonic oscillation which happens on the wing. When you enter the flutter speed, uh, it will take more energy from the stream. Instead of damping it, it will take more energy from the airstream and start to increase the amplitude of this oscillation vibration. So when this amplitude of vibration uh, increases, uh, I mean, a small normal oscillation, which would look like manageable, would go extremely, extremely un uncontrollable. So this will result in a heavy vibrating uh, wings, which results usually a sudden uh, break of the wing. The wings usually break because it's extremely self-excited vibration in which uh, it uh, increases uh, its speed. So flutter and divergence are the most dangerous phenomena phenomenon in, uh, in uh, aeroelastic analysis one for the dynamic, the other one for static. Buffeting is mainly related to unsteady aer aerodynamics. This is another advanced concept in, in the field of aerodynamics. It results with uh, airflow, with, with starting the separation of airfoil on, the, on the, bo the boundary layers will start to separate on the wing or on the body of the aircraft, which will generate other uh, shock waves depending on the type, normal shock, oblique shocks, and uh, which will result also a catastrophic incident. So what in this course, what I want in this lecture, what I want you to understand is like um, aeroelasticity is a very dangerous phenomenon, which is uh, uh, which comprises of this aerodynamic structural and inertial forces and their interaction is which creates these forces. There is a static and dynamic from the static one. The control reversal and the divergence are very important, especially the divergence and from the dynamic is flatter is very important. So. These are very dangerous occasions. That's why we study them. These are very dangerous phenomena. So we should find a way how to uh, mitigate this incident. Uh, if we see some history, uh, how did this, uh, they notice these uh, incidents? Uh, the first ever flutter accident happened in 1916. This is like uh, early times with the wood aircraft. If you see the, the aircraft I put in the presentation at the beginning, also, those aircrafts had uh, this control reversal problems, uh, flutter problems, divergence problems uh, during the early times. So they, uh, they, they, they start from there. And during the First World War, uh, the, is one of the biggest problems when they had the bombers, uh, which was a very frequently happening phenomenon, this one. So during the First World War, if I remember well, to, to to mitigate this problem, they added a load, like uh, another heavy load under to balance, to damp the things. Another one was in 1997, which is quite recent actually. Uh, there was a test of F-17, stealth fighter, a multi-million dollar project. Uh, it, uh, it crashed due to, due to flutter. Uh, and one of the most famous is, I don't know if you ever heard of the Tacoma Bridge, it's not aerospace, Space actually, it's a civil engineering, uh, civil engineering <coughs> case. It's the largest bridge, the Tacoma, Tacoma Bridge in the US, I think Washington. Uh, there, are, there are good videos in YouTube if you type aeroelastic flutter, and then you can see how the, the, the bridge starts, this huge bridge starts to vibrate slowly, and then this uh, oscillation starts to increase, to, to self-excite, and suddenly uh, go into a, uh, uh, a crash and then the whole bridge falls down and it's a very uh, interesting incident to study uh, because this tells us that um, aeroelasticity is not only focused on aircrafts it's also focused on bigger bridges like that or in the taller buildings like uh, if you talk about the buildings in Dubai the Burj Dubai all those things in Dubai, they have to consider their, uh, their elasticity study because it's very, very important for them as well. <clears throat> How can we avoid this phenomenon? What to do? So what, did, what didn't they do in the past and what can we do now? Because the problem is mainly now people don't do this, uh, this analysis because it's a bit costly, it costs a lot. So what we can do is we can do either a simplified elastic analysis, 
simplified elastic analysis. The problem is it cannot be done everywhere. It can be done on uh, uh, some special uh, easier aircrafts. So we have to do a simplified uh, elastic analysis. I will show you how to do it later on. And we have to do a good uh, elastic design. We have to keep in consideration of the divergence, the flutter, and control reversal. Uh, the other costly methods are we have to, uh, once you created your uh, model or your, your uh, prototype, you have to do a proper wind tunnel testing, uh, ground vibration testing, and uh, a test during flight, which is the last three methods are extremely, extremely expensive because you have to build the prototype and start to do the test. So, which is in case of failure, you know, the cost. So it's highly, highly, highly desirable for us to come up with a, a model a design early stage before even building, uh, before even building the, our first prototype. We have to make a model and do a very reliable analysis. And after doing that, if we can, we do a wind tunnel testing because we can make a scale version of a elastic scale version of our <clears throat> our prototype instead of building the whole things and doing a ground vibration test and the light test. Okay, what is elastic design? <clears throat> elastic design. Sorry. Aeroelastic design usually uh, occurs after the general aircraft configuration has been fixed. First, actually in uh, next week's, uh, I mean, in my next lecture, I will talk about the general uh, aircraft design. It should have been more that is, uh, I should have done their uh, aircraft design first then talk the specific, but I wanted to change it up. I want to talk about the Jamaya Salam Aeroelasticity Islamic Barad, this concept last talk or not next time uh, when you're in lecture. In general, how to uh, design an aircraft from scratch in your own life. So, uh, so let me discuss in the garden, the yes garden. So after you design, after you decide the, the configuration of your aircraft, then you have to start to, to think about how to do the aeroelastic design. And this is a problem is we cannot do some empirical uh, test or statistical design because uh, aeroelasticity depends on the, it's very specific to the design. So, so we have to for, for sure do these tests. And as I as explained, the uh, flutter is a very complex phenomena. It's a mix of uh, a lot of mode vibrations, uh, harmonic os oscillations and everything. So it has to be done properly. Uh, before doing this elasticity, but we have to develop a good mathematical model of the aircraft, as uh, as any do uh, as we do any kind of modeling. We have to first of all come a good mathematical. We have to come up with a good mathematical model of uh, the aircraft. So once we have a good mathematical model of the aircraft, then we we, we will construct uh, the aeroelastic model using a combination of the structure and the, the, aerody the aerodynamics uh, model. Uh, has anybody heard about FEM or finite element methods in, a, in a, a structural design? Yes, no, to see if it's alive. Okay. Mm -hmm. Finite element methods. And uh, doublet lattice models, I will talk to you about them later on in the next. So for example, uh, look at this, this, uh, this model. Can somebody explain what you can see in this, in this model? Just to see a sign of life. Okay, uh, this, this, this line you see, uh, the one with, with the finite element model, bar elements, it's a, it's a way of representing the whole aircraft with those lines. 
So this is a very, very, very simplified model of the plane of an aircraft, for example. This is a general uh, generic transport aircraft with a T-tail and a high wing uh, with everything straight, rectangular wings, no sweep, no, no tappers, nothing. So in case you have such an easy rectangular, um, uh, rectangular wings and bodies, you can, you can design it as a, as, as a single line for the structural elements. And the aerodynamic panels will be the doublet lattice method. But even if, this, if you see this one, even if this looks very, very simple, even for a small like straight line like this, we have about 678 degrees of freedom. So the amount of equation which we have to solve just for this model is extremely, extremely, uh, uh, it requires a lot of computational time. So now I will I will show you like with uh, how, which is the equation which we have to solve. Here it's a, a simplified presentation of the general aeroelastic equation. This is the maths. I, I, I'm not going to go deep into the mathematics and uh, explain just to give a highlight and how the things work. So these A, B, C, D coefficients, which are in front of uh, like matrices, which explain one talks about structural inertia, which I was talking in the beginning, since it's aerodynamic. Then B talks about aerodynamic damping. C is about aerodynamic stiffness, structural damping, structural uh, stiffness, and the coordinates which we are working on. So this equation written in this way uh, looks simple, but it's extremely, extremely large. So the coefficients are this, but imagine for 600, uh, 600 degrees of freedom and, and everything. So this is the general equation of elasticity, which takes all the structural inertial and aerodynamic forces together. And we have to solve it. As you can see, this one cannot be solved analytically. So it's almost impossible to solve this analytically. So that's why we need the modeling, which means the numerical simulations. So uh, I've seen in the, in, the, in the schedules, there are people, other uh, lecturers are going to talk about uh, modeling uh, and which softwares to use, how to model in, in which software. Uh, it is good to follow those things. Here, I will talk about one or two softwares which we used to, to, to model. But this shows like how extremely difficult this kind of uh, things is. So this is the, the general outline, the, let's say the, the flow chart of the method. So we have, a, let's say a, a geometry of a wing. So once we have this geometry, uh, before analyzing on this wing to analyze the aerodynamic you know, the, the elastic forces, as I said, is the interaction of structural and aerodynamic forces. So we have to solve two different things. What are the structural loads acting on this, on this, uh, on this material, on this wing, let's say for our example, a wing, and what are the aerodynamic loads acting? So we have to model the structural modeling and the aerodynamic modeling. So for example, this, uh, my, my project was done using a, a software called MSC Nastran, Nastran Patran for uh, elastic modeling. So, and I was using uh, another software called FEMAP for the structural modeling. So it's a joint FEMAP with NX Nastran. You can use it together to make some elastic analysis because FEMAP uh, has a special future in which you can also do the aerodynamic wear. In, in other cases, for example, if you have to use Abacus for the structural modeling, so probably you have to use ANSYS Fluent or some kind of software to do aerodynamic uh, modeling, then you have to import the results from different softwares and then solve it. So this looks a very easy way of presenting this, but inside every block here, there's extremely complex mathematics. So let's say we have a, a structural modeling. So first we do the structural modeling of the material, then we do the aerodynamic modeling. So we do the interpolation. What is this interpolation? The interpolation part is you have to take 
the nodes or the models or the loads from the structural modeling and the aerodynamic modeling and you have to mix them because structural modeling works in different way aerodynamic modeling works in different way they do the calculation in different way so you have to take this result join them and interpolate them once you manage to do these interpolations and then you can uh, you, you can perform your um, your analysis then after you analyze, depending on the software you have, uh, you can see uh, a post-processing of the results. <clears throat> so before, when we talk about structural theory, again, I'm giving you a highlight. I will not go deep into the mathematics of uh, uh, the, I will, not give, I will not go deep into the mathematics of it. <clears throat> when we talk about structural modeling, first of all, we have to know a structural theory because what is the theory behind? So in the first picture I showed you, we, we, we defined it as a line, which is line is a beam element. So if you see the first equation, EI to the force power. So this one is a beam deflection uh, equation, which is, if you know it, it's called the Euler-Bernoulli theorem. The Euler-Bernoulli theorem talks about, you can simplify the entire model into small infinitesimal types of beams. Uh, assume a wing, since you know if a wing is attached to a fuselage of an aircraft, it's like you can assume it as a, a cantilever beam. Uh, if you know a civil engineer, mechanical, you know it's like a, a beam attached to a wall or something. In that case, you know, a fixed free beam. So the first simplification, like which I saw you earlier, is called the beam theory, which you say, okay, I divide my wings or my air structure into a piece of beam. So I will divide them into smaller beams. For example, in the other case, 670 beams, smaller beams. And I will solve this equation for each beam uh, and then integrate some of them up. So this is the beam theory. Uh, the beam theory is very good, simplified, uh, faster results. But the problem is the beam, as you know, since it's a one-dimensional one object, we are mainly talking about only one uh, bending forces. So we are talking about only the mode one, the bending forces. So we will not be talking about torsions and all. The other complex theory is called the plate theory, which is here we assume the structure, the wing as a, a rectangular, a rectangular uh, beam. Uh, I mean, uh, sorry, a, re a rectangular plate. So we say the wing is a plate. In this case, it's a bit more complex. Here is when you see the partial derivatives uh, start to insert. Um, we have the two coordinates, the X and the Y. It's not only the X anymore. So the second equation here you see is a plate theory equation. Uh, the constitutive equation, the derivation is a bit longer, but these are done under assumptions. For example, the first one with the beam theory I said is the uh, uh, is using the Euler Bernoulli's assumptions. The second one, for example, the plate theory is, uh, I think it's Kirchhoff and Love's uh, assumption. So, this is a structure of theory. The theory behind it is too much long, and people who study aerospace structures are going to go further deep into these things, do all this mathematics, understand it, and everything, and then create a structural model to this one. So, this is actually an example of my work. Um, uh, my work was actually, uh, we had some original aircraft, uh, which does not have a winglet. Winglet is the, is the, the, the part at the end, you know, the smaller wing, which doesn't have a winglet. So we, we wanted to analyze the benefit of adding a winglet to a normal regional aircraft with no winglet. But to make this winglet a bit more interesting, we, we planned it to make it a folding winglet instead of uh, the traditional attached one. I don't know if you know the Boeing 777X, I think has now has been in service with a folding winglet project. This project was done uh, for my master thesis in, col in the collaboration with uh, TU Delft. Uh, and I think TU Delft in collaboration with Airbus. So I was working with a professor in Delft and uh, this coming up with an elastic design of uh, this folding winglet for uh, regional aircrafts called ATR-70. So, uh, so if you see here, we, you simplify the geometry as here are the three structural models which I am showing you. Are, the first one is just a line as you see, the wing is defined as a beam. A cantilever beam, this is a half wing, 
that's coming. So fix that one at the, at the, at the one end and the other one just uh, align divisions of lots of beams depending on the element size you choose. I will talk about them later on. And the second one you can see is a kind of shell. So there's a shell model, this one, or you can be a plate with a thickness. And the third one is also a plate model, just a flat plate model. So these are all, I mean, this picture look nice, but a lot of mathematics inside them. So this is how you simplify your general wing to, to assume the structural model. So once you define, you finish the theory, once you make the structural model beautiful and you create uh, your beams or plates or what shell, whatever, you know, in a small in a structural model like this, define everything, the loads. Once you have a perfect thing, the next step to do is to do the aerodynamic modeling. So to do the aerodynamic modeling, you have to know about the aerodynamic theory. Uh, there is uh, different types of theory, the doublet lattice method, subsonic flight, supersonic flight, hypersonic flights, oscillatory aerodynamics. So depending on your uh, project, depending on your case study, you choose your uh, aerodynamic theory, then you go to Uh, but the, the problem here, I will, uh, uh, they are called panels. Then these panels are, uh, the forces of these panels are calculated at the center of each box. So imagine if you have 2,000 boxes or 10,000 boxes, one, 1 million, depending on the size element, you have the calculation. But the calculation is done at the center of the boxes, while for the beam, it's done at the, at the tip, at the nodes. So when you try to map the nodes from the structure to, to aerodynamic, it will create a lot of problems uh, because they have different locations. But uh, luckily the softwares, uh, don't, uh, it doesn't matter, they, they manage to do it. But to do this, you have also another mathematics called splines. This splines is an interpolation technique. Uh, there are theory of beams, infinite beam splines, or theory of plate, infinite plane splines. So for beams, you use uh, the beam splines, and for plates, you use the plate splines. So this is interpolation technique uh, you use is you transfer for you, you send the, the loads from the structure to the aerodynamic degree of freedom based on the theory you choose. So you take the, uh, your, your structural model and then you, you put that model into the aerodynamic model and then you map them. You see these blue lines is when you map uh, your uh, beams, I mean your structural models to the aerodynamic models. So once you manage to do this, this is, uh, you are almost done because you, you did your uh, structural modeling, you did your aerodynamical modeling and you took from your structural model and you mapped them. So everything is working perfect. So next step to do is just to do your analysis. For example, uh, for our case, we have to do the analysis to do a comparison one at sea level density and another at sea level condition and another one at uh, the, cruise, uh, the cruise altitude. The cruise altitude was about 7,000 meters. So we have to do the um, at 7,000 meter and at sea level condition. And uh, we had to compare that we, we kept the Mach number, the speed constant to 0 0.4, but we had to compare also the effect of the angle of attack. So we took three degree angle of attack and eight degree angle of attack. We changed the, and then the, uh, the dynamic pressure depending on each altitude. So, once you enter all these input, param input parameters into your software, where your aircraft is found, the flight condition, once you define the flight condition, you define uh, the structural model, aerodynamic model, you map them, you define the flight condition, then you choose a method of solving it, and then it's just uh, solving it. Once you do that, you are done. 
So uh, anyway, in this presentation, I'll be mainly talking about uh, static error elasticity. So since it's easier because the other one takes a lot of time. And For example, I'm sorry, uh, four centimeter deformation uh, on the on the wing surface. So, uh, at which point so to see this one? For example, is uh, we compare at three degree angle of attack, which is uh, our initial case, and that standard sea level condition, what is the result? We will see that one. For example, if you can see this graph properly, and you can see the gray line is the, is the highest translation, I mean, the highest degree, and the dynamic pressure is uh, 11,348 Pascal, which means, uh, its worst case happens at sea level at high angle of attack. So in this case, it has a higher load, which creates a higher deformation. And so you have to adjust according to this, which we can adjust. Yeah, the dynamic pressure, you can change its atmospheric property. Uh, so what you can change is the angle of attack. How can you reduce it? How can you dump it? How can you mitigate it? You can see from this uh, plate model. It goes without saying, this plate uh, modeling gives you a better result, but it takes a lot of time to compute, a lot of time to compute. So this is the same as I talk about the stress variation. Um, but when we talk, come about beam models, for example, this one has find beautifully. So, you will have, uh, I have three different element size again, 0 0.075, 0 0.01, 0 0.005 millimeters, small, smaller ones. As you see, if you see the element size, as the element size decreases, the number of element, of course, increases. You have more elements because you divide it more, obviously. So from 600 elements to 1,500, then from 1,500 to 3,000 elements. So you do three simulations. One, a simulation which you have with 600 elements, the other one with 1,500, other one with 3,000, and then you see the results. How many time, how many seconds it took you to computational cost, it took you to perform this simulation at these different element sizes? And is there a significant result difference? If it gives you exactly the same result, but you perform the, you perform the result for uh, 10 minutes and uh, two seconds, I mean, you prefer to do the two seconds one and save your time. So you, we, you have to always do these comparisons and sensitivity analysis and then optimize and choose what is best for you. But always, this is the, with the BIM model, this is what the result I got from my project is this one, because the mode one is the bending, you saw the mode two is the torsion. And the mode three and four are bending and torsion. Secondary in secondary torsion. So, uh, once we present this result, why do you do uh, this method? A secondary, oh, uh, it will face a flat work. So, what we, we design is we, we, we prepare the product earlier before going to the production phase. We do the computational design. Mathematically speaking, does it make sense? So that is how we do the mathematical modeling. And we do it on a simulation on the computer, which is cost effective. The only cost you have here is electricity, the softwares and uh, the engineers, but you don't have to build a lot of things. So uh, numerical methods are very important. Aeroelasticity, I know it's a bit uh, advanced concept, which is not easy to, to explain in such a fast way, but it's, an interesting concept which usually people forget not to take into account 
And when you don't take it to account, it uh, once it happens, it's almost impossible to, to fix it. So you, you, you lose everything. So it's better always to give attention to aerodynamic designs immediately after you have uh, aeroelastic designs, after you decided your aircraft configurations, and then uh, study furthermore to, to understand these things. And to tell you, which was up to now, it's not very well understood. It, for example, the flutter phenomena is not perfectly understood yet. It's very complex. And people, if you are interested, you can do further research on these topics, which is very, very open still. Uh, now there are even further advanced concepts like uh, aero servo elasticity, which you have to include also the, the, the control, the control surfaces, like uh, con control like servo motors and everything. So this is a very good uh, topic to do further research. Uh, I think uh, I, I am done for my presentation and Thank you. If you have any questions, uh, I don't know how it will work, but we can discuss. Yeah. Yeah, if you have any questions, you can raise your hands in the chat and then we will give you the chance to ask your questions. Thank you. It doesn't have to be on the last it can be in our She's someone. Oh, someone. Uh, Yamatown, your aerodynamic aero elasticity performance load, Wingate sign or on Wingate Ketamarach but Bohala results color then she described in the Taragina. Thank you, Madame Sagrano. Yes, yeah, uh, project to uh, Wingley to collect part one, and then you have a performance investigation no? uh, yeah. with Wingley and without Wingley. For lift performance, I have the results, but it's another file, so I have mainly focus marks left on the corner. Lifting performance, which I'm running during takeoff and now the Moland from Target for this game, high drag generator. Those ones are beneficial, adding lift performance, but it gives extra cost. Uh, what was the problem? Which you group didn't know extra extra cost generator again. They are wing late on design the madrig. Uh material, extra cost, you know. And uh wing late batch and maracoter diagnosis batch and maracoter, bzu airport touch and then the terminal roach, even uh both I and low chum and the mari already our for example, our project was ATR 72. It was already a big uh, aircraft, a big digital aircraft. So, Australia wing rate, 
አንዳንድ ሪፖርቶች ላይ ችግር ይፈጥር ነበር አንድ ላይ ማድረግ አይችልም ነበር ለዚህም ነው እኛ አሁን ፎልዲንግ ዊንግሌት ዲዛይን ፕሮፖዝ እየተደረገውና ለቲክ ቴክ ኦፍ ላይ ነው ማይንድ የምትጠቀምበት ቴክ ኦፍ ስታደርግ ዊንግሌቱን ተደረገው አለ ላንድ ላንዲንግ ሲደረግ ይዘረጋል ከዛ ዋንስ እንደ ታክሲ ተመልሰው አለ ነው ማለት ነው ሐሳባችን እና yes there are flight performance benefits mainly during take off and landing and increasing the like the aspect ratio that was the benefit thank you for your question i hope manishela uh, Yes, I, uh, I think, did you understand the response uh, or do you have further questions you can ask? Leila, do you have a question for you? Just raise your hands and uh, you can ask. Ilati, I can read them. አንተሩ ከሌሎ so tiyake kalilla i think yezari lecture zilay mencharis yimeslenyalna adella barakat yes yes bari bakul zilay mencharis yimeslenyal ya neger kalilla we are going to discuss it nara gal sure ከዛሪ ቶፒክም ለየት ያለ በዚህ ዘርፍ ላይ ጥያቄ ካላችሁም you can raise questions i think በረከት እሱ ቀደም ብሎ ነበር general anything related to aerospace not to okay uh, so tiyake um, kalilla we would like to thank barakat of course for his lecture today nikatel uh, miholan next week as you got that yellow lecture now maybe you want to add something i think I ማስተራናየፊማፍልዩነት ስንታ ከሆነ ትንሽ እንድትከብራራለን ነገር ይከብራራለን ነገር Thank you it's a, it's a very good question ባጠቃላይ ናስትራ ናስትራ ለ MS ናስትራ እና ፓትራ they are structural modeling softwareዎች ናቸው ፊማፕም ደግሞ ሌላ ያው ሌላ ሌላ ካምፓኒ ነው ራሱን እንቻለ structural structural modeling ላይ ብቻ የሚሰራው ፊማፕ ከዛ በኋላ የፊማፕ with nx nastra የሚባል ፊማፕዎች ራሳቸው የሰሩት ሶፍትዌር ነው ፊማፕ ላይ ምን አለበት ለጂኦሜትሪክ ሞዴሊንግ nx nx ፓርት አለበት ለየር ላስቲክ አናሊሲስ ደግሞ nastra እናርገው አንድ ሶፍትዌር ነው ወጥ የሆነ ሶፍትዌር ነው ስለዚህ አንተ ፊማፕ with nx nastra የሚባል ሶፍትዌር ዳውንሎድ አድርገው ሶፍትዌር መጠቀም ከተሰራ ምንም ፋይሎችን ወስደ ወደ ናስትራን ናስትራን በሌላ ቦታ ከፍተና ወደዛ መላክ የለብን 
uh, it's just one flow process. So there's a nexum already who's the FEMA who's the name of FEMA be a Siemens, you know, the Siemens company, you know, who's the name of the structural, the geometric design, and next need to come out. The panel generation, the aerodynamic generation, or as FEMA print to come in, that's the interpolate drugo solve the matter with an astran in the world and what the software you could do it like uh, i don't know let's say a geometrical body digun for example when i did it uh, uh, easier easier i did we did the train solid works so solid works like designed other girl now with the map with the next nastran import other good now yeah Small modification of chin by index and direct to channel the female plugin. You don't need my left channel and female for this structure modeling. So, uh, uh, one way to do it in solid works or Katia structural and geometrical design on the right other gun because the wala you can go to let's say Abacus or uh, even Nastran by itself, Patran Nastran to do the structural simulation. Kazabala has a result of pressure data, load of data, the text file, other get lost in that. We have a question for the Nastran. Kazan is the Nastran one for two solver in the static or elastic solver. No, what is that? Look at the result of Nastran in the text file format. Let me see the real result. Kazan result of display the model. The later post processing nagar le asphalt the genome model. So the three four software can be taken below. Uh, FEMA is the next Nastra, it's like one packet, like to do all the elasticity that you need. But still, uh, even for my case, I uh, my own structural drawing one part, so it works in the background. I feel more comfortable. Uh, this is the software. Let not Runo, can you get us a bit? ተጠሩ <laughs> Link, share. Name, but I'm saying I'm